uh, we were invited to uh, to a Stop the Violence event uh, that involved um, Mr. Beverly. He called me up and he wanted to see uh, if we would be like to uh, participate in it. Uh, it wasn't just us; it was multiple uh, schools in the IPS district that uh, that participate participated in it. Um, this conversation was about um, basically how can we stop the violence in Indianapolis? How can we stop the gun violence and uh, things of that nature? Gun violence, overall, how it's really affecting the youth, people our age, around the city, uh, different high schools. Uh, so basically they're telling us about like the consequences of being violent with especially firearms um, and like how far, how long you can go away for it. And um, you know, you can be tried as an adult even if you're like 16 or 17. So you'll get like the adult sentence instead of like a juvenile sentence. Race Thompson from uh, IU, ba from IU basketball was there. Uh, Trace, Trace Jackson Davis was there as well. Race and Trace, they go to IU, they're on the basketball team. Like, they're like big D1 athletes. So like, most athletes know who they are. So Stop the Violence just brought them in to like, to like show us one of the stars, like people that we look up to, people that we see on the TV, you know. Jackson Davis and Race Thompson. Like, I like that they brought them in since they're like, they're kind of like us, right? Since they're all Hooper, they're, since they're both Hoopers at IU. And um, we can relate to them. So then we kind of saw their path. And how they're leaders and how basically, they basically said that how what we say, the way we move can impact many people. So that's like, spreading positivity, it'll be able to hit way more people because we're athletes, one, and we're seniors. Uh, we, we got in groups and we tried to figure out ways that we can possibly um, come together and, and basically stop the violence and how each school can do something different at each school to, to, to promote this. There was a question and answer uh, uh, thing after uh, after we we got done talking, um, I think they they interviewed a guy that was uh, that had been in jail. Uh, he had just been released. Um, that particular part of it, I wanted them to take part of uh, to really notice and understand the things that he went through, the decisions he made uh, were decisions that he would wish he could take back. I feel like his story really like made me realize that I can help people that need it. Um, he explained how he was able to get out and take a different path rather than going back to what he did or and eventually getting locked up because he has children. I don't have children, but I got a lot of friends that are younger than me. So I would rather help them now so we could get to where we need to get to that's not jail or anywhere else bad in the street type deal. I'd rather do that now than watch them take that different path, end up where he ended up or where lots of people end up from dealing with street life. I like hearing his story. Like, I just like hearing people's story, like what they went through, what they gonna do differently from what they did before, making comparison points between their life and my life. Because like recently one of my friends well, one of my friend's friends lost his life, and he was also a, he was a student here. He had just graduated, and it's just like, it's like messed up because people, like people dying and all that, especially at a young age. What I work on, what we work on with our guys in our program is, is habits, and we want their habits to be, to be grade A. We don't want them to have any bad habits, and you know, uh, hanging out, hang, we talk about hanging out with the right people hanging out with like-minded people. Um, so I, 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 want th I wanted them to take away that this thing that they have as far as life can be taken away just like that. So why do you feel as though athletes were invited to participate in this program? Um, probably because we have the, the st I think the student athlete has a, the biggest voice of, in the school. Um, I think they, uh, a lot of, 
of the students that are non-athletes, sometimes they follow those particular athletes and they, when they say something, people follow. When they do something, people do want to do. Um, so I think that that's why they, they had us come to do that. Um, I would say a lot of it is because since we're inner city, like inner city kids, like we're exposed to like a lot more violence than a lot more people that are like up north on 465 and in the suburbs, I'd say. So we're a lot more prone to it happening. Uh, the one thing I want them to understand uh, while they're in my program is that we have to give back to our community. Um, we also have to see un and understand what's going on in our community. Um, they can't be naive at what's going on. Um, I, I know I'm scared for them after practice when I get when I get when I let them go, you know, because I don't know what's out there and what's going to happen. So we have to be aware of it, and I think they have to be aware of what's going on in Indianapolis as well, to be able to give back and us for us to have a safe environment in our school. So um, they had another question and answer uh, type deal with uh, Trace and and and, uh, and race, uh, and they talked about a lot of the things that they had to they deal with as far as being in a college athlete. Um, as much as I want to tell them, hey, it won't be this way on the next level. You're going to have to figure out a way to do X, Y, and Z. Um, they have somebody that's their age that is going through it right now. They don't care what I did in 19, whatever. <laughs> so, uh, but somebody of their age as of right now, they are telling them, hey, this is what the next level looks like. And um, here's how you got to deal with it. Race and Trace talk about, you know, holding their um, teammates accountable, like doing all this crazy stuff that you know you're not supposed to be doing. You're on a basketball team, football team, whatever team, you're supposed to be like head on straight, like you're supposed to be doing what you're supposed to do. Like good, good grades, good as you can. Don't go outside yelling and doing all this other stuff. Be on the chill side, do all this other stuff. Um, and, and our guys had some great questions. Uh, they stood up and they asked questions. They got some great answers. I think some of the questions they've asked, me and that particular uh, player had talked about that before. And they answered, and, and Race and Trace answered those questions like I, like I, like I had said that. It was, it, was, it was being reinforced, for sure, yeah. Your athletes, you are trying to send them in the direction of being leaders. For sure. I want them to be leaders. I want them to be not just leaders on the court. I want them to be leaders in the hallways. I want them to understand that if something was to transpire out of the hallways, they understand what it means to, I need to go to class. Or, and not just be a leader, but also taking care of one another. You know, um, understanding that if somebody's doing something wrong or not the right thing that we know this is something that we don't do in our program, them stepping up and saying, hey, you know we don't do that type of stuff. You know, that's the type of stuff that we, in our program, want. I want my guys to be able to do and take care of each other in that sense. And I'm not saying that we're separating ourselves from, from, from the population of, of Short Ridge. No, we all all one. But there's, there's a difference between um, um, the, the taking care of one another but then also taking care of everybody. It's like kind of people, it's kind of like athletes' jobs to like help other people stay away from like from violence itself because we're seen as higher ups in our school sometimes, even though that's like not what we want to always be, but like we have an influence whether we know it or not. Uh, me personally, I just took spread more positivity. If you see somebody that's like getting into that game, trying to like bring them over here, bring them to the right path. Um, yeah, just take people that's going the wrong way, like under your will, since you know what you're supposed to be doing. You're trying to like spread love, show them what they need to do. Personally, just try to spread more positivity because of where I am in high school and how people view me I feel like I would be able to spread more positivity being that I am a senior, 
I've played varsity all four years. I'm pretty well known, I guess. And it's needed, it's very much so needed. So, yeah, that's what I took from it. I could, I could use my platform to spread more positivity throughout the community. Also being vocal, being vocal as a leader, yeah. like that's something that my coaches talk to me about like every day. Like, bro, you gotta talk, you gotta, you can't just lead by example. Like, you, gotta, you gotta talk, because not everybody gonna be looking at you. The takeaway was like how like everybody is like different a little bit. It's like different in many ways, but also like how we can all come together just to like make everything better. Well, we talked about that particular thing too at the uh, at the event. Um, what you know, what does it look like when we go back to our prospective schools, and how are we going to promote stop the violence? How are we going to promote that um, as a whole, but in separate entities? And our guys came up with some great ideas about doing some things on world changing, changing one on one, and being able to explain, you know, why gun violence is not not the right thing to do. Why uh, bringing guns to school is not the right thing to do, or just having a gun in general is 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 not necessarily right because nowadays you can you can hold a gun and be right, you know. Um, but we can set up different events uh, in the school that uh, that can promote that particular thing. We can have banners, and we can have uh, um, things at our basketball game or foot or football game. I'm coach quite sure Coach McCray would love to be a, be a part of it and, and holding, thing, holding things just like that to, to be able to promote stopping the violence. This is not allowed here in our building, not necessarily in our building, but in our community. So this is something that they didn't just participate in this program just once, they mm -hmm. want to carry it. They, we're carrying it forward. on. Uh, the, the program is going to get us shooting shirts that we're going to wear. Uh, uh, while we warm up. What their plan was, we got a sponsor for the schools that showed up. We were all gonna get uh, diff uh, warm ups that say stop the violence. Basically something that reps the program and we were all gonna wear them on game days. Reading the idea of stop the violence? Um, I think it's our culture and it's, it's, it's continuing to grow. Um, I think we have the right people in place to, to build the right culture. Um, I think it's, it's, it's it, and we can't skip steps. The one, that's the one thing that we can't do. Um, if we can try to skip steps here or there, then it won't be right. So it's gonna be a slow turn in how, how the tide turns and how, what our culture is gonna look like. It's the same thing with our basketball program. Our basketball program is gonna, it's taking some slow turns, but the tide is turning. And I can see it when, when I go out into, to, into the public and what, when I wear my short ridge shirt, people are like, short ridge? Hmm. They're thinking differently about it instead of it being just some school that's just downtown. Okay. Um, Mr. Fountain referred to his players as future leaders. How do you feel about that? It feels really great, you know, knowing that I could probably be something big like that. 